الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and our father Adam and our father Abraham and on Moses and on Jesus and on his mother the blessed uh, Virgin Mary and on the last of them all the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Brother Chairman Dr. Mira <coughs> Sister Nick Mahani Muhammad Haji Aman Tahir Brothers and Sisters Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Before we begin uh, let me take the opportunity to make a brief announcement lest I forget someone who has devoted something like 18 years of his life to the work of restoring silver as money and who has achieved a considerable progress in convincing his people in Mexico that this should be done who's made a name for himself Hugo Hugo Salinas Price wrote to me uh, about a month ago and we have extended an invitation to him to come to Malaysia he has accepted our invitation and sometime in the next few months inshallah uh, he's going to address a gathering here in Malaysia on the subject of restoring silver basically silver as money because that's where the big problem is silver not so much gold and we thank you Mr. Price if you <laughs> hear this lecture for accepting our kind invitation he has a lot of experience on what are the problems involved in restoring silver as money we want to begin by pointing out if we may that the economic collapse which is already with us But the more spectacular collapse which is around the corner, the economic meltdown, in our view, is not taking place in a vacuum. But rather that there is a larger picture connected to a political, a military, and an eschatological agenda being pursued by those who wish to rule the whole world. 15, 20 years ago when we were speaking about this, look, we were looking as though we, we had come from the moon. Nobody laughs at it anymore now. A people who want to rule the world and to do so on behalf of the Euro Jewish state, the Euro Jewish state of Israel. It was in the 1930s or 40s that Arnold Toynbee the famous British historian 
published his famous book entitled Civilization on Trial. You might want to read that book. Civilization on Trial. And in that book it is absolutely astonishing that that British historian who was an ardent Christian incidentally was able to penetrate the reality of modern Western civilization of which he was a part to put into that book in black and white that the Western agenda is to take control of the entire world the land the sea the air these are his actual words never before in human history did any people ever pursue such an incredible agenda which is now unfolding before our bewildered eyes it behoves those who recognize their rational capacity as a gift from Allah to use that intellect that capacity to reason to seek to understand why is this happening it is foolishness really that we should establish a jama'a they call it jamat <laughs> And uh, our conception of religion, to which the British Parliament is very pleased to agree, and so to the American Congress and the whole of Israel, that this conception of religion of this Jamaat is that all that we need to do is to perform our five daily prayers and to dress in accordance with the sunnah nothing wrong with that and to have our miswak mashallah that's good the miswak you know the one that keeps the poli polish the enamel on the teeth intact it's not scraped so when you smile it's like the stars glittering above and then when you use the toothbrush you've seen a toothbrush haven't you and the brittle of the toothbrush scratches the enamel of the teeth and then when you smile nobody is impressed so the miswak mashallah our conception of religion is to go to the masjid and perform our duties and go back home and our conception of religion is to go to all the Muslims around the world in something called Gasht and call them to the Masjid and call them to Salat and fasting and so on but we are not concerned with this nonsense that Imran Hussein is talking about we are a people who do not have a rational faculty we don't seek to understand the reality of the world today. Tabligh Jamaat. Jamaat to Tabligh. Well, I have a message for them today. These people who seek to take my people into this wonderland of sleep and slumber. Allah speaks in the Quran about you. This is the first time I'm speaking so harshly but the time has come to speak. If we are to show respect for our own rational faculty whether we be Muslim or Hindu or Christian or Jew or Buddhist then we must seek to understand what's happening in the world. Allah speaks in the Quran and doubtless it's there in the Bible as well about a people who have eyes and yet do not see that's you Tablik Jamaat they have ears and yet do not hear that's you Tablik Jamaat 
They have hearts and yet do not understand that's you, Tablik Jamal. And these harsh words are spoken today not to vilify you, but to wake you up from your sleep. They're not spoken with hostility, they're spoken with compassion. Allah speaks of these people who have eyes and yet do not see, who have ears and yet do not hear, who have hearts and yet do not understand. They're just like cattle. Balhumadal, rather they're worse than cattle. They're more misguided than cattle. Ulaika humul ghafil, and these are the ones who are heedless of the signs of Allah, the one God, mysteriously unfolding in the world. If you have truth, then truth must explain what's happening in the world today. And if it cannot, then go search for truth because you don't have the truth. The reality is that they want to rule the world. They have NATO as their military arm. And if you supported NATO in Libya, then you're cattle. And if you're supporting NATO in Syria, then you're worse than cattle. You can't understand. That's the military arm. We do not say that you do not have the right to seek liberation from oppression. Of course you have the right to do that. But you do not have the right to enter into an alliance with NATO. The military arm of world Zionism. When you do that, according to the Quran, you've lost your Islam. I don't have the time to repeat that verse of the Quran for you, but it's there in many of my previous lectures. There is a political and military agenda being pursued, of which the economic collapse is linked. And that political and military agenda of a pig-headed obsession to rule the whole world is linked to the state of Israel. That they want to hand over to Israel the rule over the world. And it would be helpful, it would be beneficial if we can either spectacularly decrease the population of the world, particularly the Arabs, perhaps by biological warfare, or we can enslave them through an economic meltdown and a monetary meltdown. That Israel wants to rule the world should now be clear. But why does Israel want to rule the world? Prophet Muhammad gave us the eschatology. Eschatology is a big word, but every Malay knows about Ilmu Akhirul Zaman. <laughs> <laughs> Even the child knows about Ilmu Akhiru Zaman or the end time, the study of the end time. Why does Israel want to rule the world? Islamic eschatology gives the answer. We know that we are living in the end time because there are signs by which we can recognize the end time. The first one, the easiest one, even if you have bad eyesight, you could still see it, is that in the end time, people who have the intellectual acumen of naked 
barefooted shepherds would be competing with each other I understand Jidda is the latest claimant now Jidda taking over from Dubai as Dubai took over from KL KL took over from Seoul and Seoul took over from Manhattan or whatever it was competing with each other in the construction of tall buildings tall buildings here is a sign of the end time given by a man who lived in the desert who never traveled out of the desert 1400 years ago when they didn't have any internet they didn't have any cell phones he never went to a university no didn't have a university degree never even went to school no if you visit him at his home there's no book in his home no pen in his home he couldn't read no he couldn't write no and that man that man from 1400 years ago could say a time will come when you're going to have this spectacular event of people competing with each other in the construction of tall buildings starting of course with Manhattan skyscrapers you know you're living in the end times all of us except Tablik Jamat with their head in the sand like ostriches and telling me and telling you this is Islam no you can't hoodwink us anymore Tablik Jamal you have to be exposed for what you are someone who is described in the Quran as worse than cattle you have eyes and yet cannot see you have ears and yet cannot hear you have hearts that yet do not understand and we are inviting you not with hostility we are inviting you with compassion to come and use the intellect and the rational faculty that Allah gave to you why does Israel want to rule the world? the answer was given 1400 years ago that a man would rule over Israel a young man powerfully built curly hair and he would be a Jew and ruling over Israel he'll rule over the world or rather he would attempt to rule over the world because I don't think that Russia will bend its knee to Israel and I don't think that China will bend her knee to Israel he will rule the world from Jerusalem and declare I am the Messiah Al Masih the Messiah but he would not be the Messiah for as every Christian knows and every Muslim knows the Messiah is the son of the Virgin Mary there was a man in India who declared that he is the Messiah and there are many people who are less than liberally endowed with intelligence who have accepted his claim they call themselves Ahmadis and they accept that he is the Messiah a man named Mirza Golam Ahmad how come you don't even have five ringgits worth of intelligence the Messiah is the son of Mary and Mirza Golam Ahmad is the son of a Punjabi woman <laughs> The Messiah, he will declare, has come. I am the Messiah. 
but he won't be the Messiah. No, said Prophet Muhammad He would be the false Messiah. He would be Dajjal. He would be the Antichrist. This is the Islamic eschatological explanation of the economic collapse and the economic meltdown that is already taking place but will be accelerated in, in, in a short time from now. I was here in Malaysia four years ago, five years ago in 2007 and at that time we were already seeing a monetary meltdown taking place and of course a monetary meltdown must have an impact on an economic meltdown they are linked together You could buy a dinar, a gold coin of 4.25 grams of gold, five years ago here in Malaysia for 90 ringgits. Was it 90? 300 into 06, 324. 324 mm -hmm. in 2006. Yeah. And what is it now? 825. 825. But the Malaysian economy is one of the better economies in the world today. Malaysia has been presented to the world as a success story. Well, how come your money is melting down? What is it that explains your monetary meltdown? The answer is that it is not something inside the country which is causing the money to fall in value so spectacularly. Forces outside of Malaysia, forces outside of the Muslim world are attacking you and attacking you with money. The US dollar in Bretton Woods was anointed by the Zionists as a new international currency. Prior to that it was a sterling pound. The US dollar was valued 20 US for one ounce of gold. Yes. And then from 20 it went to 35. For reasons explained in my book, uh, the prohibition of riba in the Quran and Sunnah, which is on my website, it's also outside. Something that the US government did in 1933, I believe. And when you, I don't have the time to explain it to you now. When you look at what the US government did in 1933, you would see the fraudulent nature of the money. And from 20 it went to 35. And then after Richard Nixon said to the world in 1971, we gave our word, but we don't have to keep it. No. In the Quran it's different. In Islam it's different. Pacta sunt servanda when you give your word you must keep your word every Christian can understand that every Hindu, every Jew, every Buddhist, every Confucian every Taoist when you give your word you must keep your word and so he tore up Bretton Woods in September 1971 and from 35 it then went to 40 and in 1973, two years later, when the war took place, it fell by 400 percent to 160 because there was an embargo on oil imposed by the Arabs. 
you had lines one mile and two miles long to get gasoline in the United States. Hmm? Why should oil at that time which was imported into the United States, I think only 4% they imported, all the rest was domestic. And oil is only one part of the economy in the United States. What explanation is there? There's a war and an embargo on Arab oil, only Arab oil, should cause your money to fall in value by 400%. The answer is that this is not to be explained by reasons in the domestic economy. No. There are forces that work outside which explain why the money is falling in value. In fact, we are now located at an extraordinary moment in history. Somewhat similar to 1914, but far more important than 1914. 1914, they calculated that they were ready to bring about great change in the world. And so they engineered Sarajevo, the assassination of the Grand Duke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo in the summer of 1914. And they closed down the Kimberley diamond mines in Kimberley in South Africa in 1914 because Rothschilds had already amassed enough money to fund every single side of a world war. And as a result of 1914, the war which commenced, the world was changed. But we are now located today at a far more momentous moment in history. And it's such a pity that Tablig Jamaat has no inkling about it and doesn't seem to be at all interested at all interested even interested in going to the Quran and going to the Hadith to understand this momentous event every single part of the world I have gone to only one people have closed the doors of the masjid to me not allowing me to teach it's Tablik Jamal nowhere in the world am I allowed to teach and to lecture and yet I am teaching you that which you do not know shame on you shame on you for closing the doors of the masjid to those who teach this subject that you do not teach and you will never teach what's wrong with you Israel wants to attack Iran it can happen any day now United States of America is resigned you cannot stop Israel United States knows that once Israel attacks Iran Iran is going to attack United States troops in Iraq United States knows that once Iran attacks the United States in Iraq United States will not have a single friend in Iraq not one and so the United States will not be able to fight a successful war against Iran in Iraq and that's why brothers and sisters and friends that's why they pulled out of Iraq so suddenly like a thief in the dark and to cover their shame they're saying we're sending troops to Israel we're sending troops here and there that's dust in your eyes they have pulled out of Iraq because they know they cannot fight Iran in Iraq that's why as soon as Israel attacks Iran and Israel knows it and the United States knows it 
and the Federal Reserve knows it as soon as and Wall Street knows it as soon as that attack takes place within hours is it so difficult to understand what's going to happen to the price of oil is it so difficult to understand what's going to happen to the price of gold this is a more momentous event in history than 1933 oh yes and the 1971 as the price of oil and the price of gold skyrocket it's actually the dollar going down into the garbage bin and because the dollar is linked to every other currency in the world today it is the international currency Haji Aman is so correct prices around the world are going to escalate and I am supposed to speak today how should we respond the rich can survive but what about the poor what about the masses who can no longer afford to buy food who cannot afford to pay electricity bills who cannot afford as they even now in Yemen cannot afford to even buy the gas cylinder with which to cook their food how are you going to survive not only that but isn't it strange that for the first time in history an economic system has drawn the villages out to the city attracted the villagers out into the city forced the villagers out of economic necessity to the city and so you now have for the first time in human history something called mega cities we used to think that one million people in a city my gosh that's a lot of people but wake up lots of cities in the world today have 10 million and some have 15 and some have 20 million people in a city and when wars take place because the attack on Israel on Iran is not meant to knock out Iran not at all the attack on Iran is meant to provoke a series of wars which are going to last for some time cities are going to be attacked how supply of food the food chain the supply chain water how are you going to survive in the city when you cannot get food you have the money to buy the food <laughs> but the food is not there because the food is delivered from outside of the city food is not grown in the cities and the water comes to you from outside and if the enemy is successful in disrupting the water mains through which water is conveyed the electricity supply and the supply of food and people are starving would you have riots? would it not be dog eat dog? so even if you have some food it probably be snatched from you before you can reach home how do we respond to what is about to take place before we answer that let us turn to the Quran for what is known as facade what is about to take place can be described as facade what is already taking place is facade facade is not just that which corrupts brings about disorder brings about disintegration facade is that also which destroys and in the Quran Allah has prescribed punishment for many different criminal acts 
But the greatest punishment of all is for fasad. There's a graded punishment. At the lower level is banishment. But at the highest level is cut off the hand and the feet from opposite sides and then crucified. Cut off the hands and feet from opposite sides and then crucify. Fasad. We not only have economic fasad in the world today, and terrorism is fasad. We have monetary terrorism. We have political terrorism. If I had the time, I'd love to explain to you the sexual terrorism. There is military terrorism in the world today, military facade. There is religious terrorism in the world today, religious facade. And the major proponents are those who want to rule the world. They do it with awesome deception. They are the terrorists. But they use the media to paint us as the terrorists. What is it that explains this universal facade in the world today? Universal oppression, universal corruption of everything. The Quran says that it explains all things. Tablik Jamaat, are you listening? The Quran says that it explains all things. Does it not? It says in Surah Al-Nahl بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبِيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ That the Quran was sent down to explain all things and so I ask you as I ask you, Dr. Yusuf Al-Qaradawi but perhaps he has a hearing problem, he cannot hear me I ask you where in the Quran where in the Quran do we have that which explains the universal facade in the world today? You cannot continue hiding behind trees forever. We demand an answer. Our answer is there. Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil There's only one possible explanation for universal facade and that is Gog and Magog will you laugh at me Imran Hussein is misguided at this moment there is no anger in my heart only pain and sorrow but let me tell you when you laugh at me which of course you should not be doing let me tell you that he who laughs last laughs best how do we respond? I want to offer to you a micro response and then even more importantly a macro response. Survival depends on retreat from the mega cities which we didn't have yesterday and we don't need today. Retreat from the mega cities and ensure security of food and of water. The two things you cannot live without. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with an Islamic scholar asking you to ensure food security and water security? If you can do it in Dongtam, Karachi we'll go ahead but I am seeing a tomorrow which is coming when there are going to be riots in Karachi because you can't get food into the city and you can't get water so before that day comes we say retreat to the countryside secondly we say produce your own food I spoke about sexual terrorism 
who fights wars? Allah didn't create women to fight wars. No. Allah created men to fight wars. I don't know whether Washington has a problem with that. Allah created the male to fight wars. He gave to the male the obligation to protect and to guard women. And so it is men who fight wars. But when you inject the cows with hormone injections and the milk that your baby drinks now has the hormone injections and the meat that your baby eats has hormone injections in it and the food that you eat is genetically modified is it possible one day that men will be like women is that possible oh yes the prophet said the man who 1400 years ago said I am a prophet of God like unto Moses and Abraham he said the time will come when women will dress like men you will see her in a jacket in the trousers and a tie I went to Indonesia last month we were staying in a hotel and the rule of the hotel that all the women who were working in the hotel had to be dressed with trousers and jacket and a tie a tie yeah I don't know how he knew it that women would dress like men so you have working clothes which is masculine not party clothes working clothes but he said that men would dress like women why would a man dress like a woman of course you know the first thing he'll have to do is to shave off his bed <coughs> excuse me the first thing he'll have to do is to shave off his bed eventually he now dresses like a woman why because he's acquiring a feminine personality are you going to send these children to some correction facility that's what the Malaysian government is doing because they're too feminine now these teenage boys are too feminine in behavior some correctional facility or are you going to tighten your belts stand up to the Zionists and look at the subject eschatologically, eschatologically that this is a planned demolition of manhood <coughs> this is sexual terrorism so it's not enough to ensure your own food security you got to ensure what is the food you're eating if tomorrow you want men to fight against oppression that manhood that virility that courage comes partly from food and so we say do not eat their food produce your own food in the micro communities in the remote countryside we also have a means of escaping the monetary predicament because once the US dollar collapses that's almost certain that the new money that's coming it's already here in fact is electronic money digital money and when you're hooked into that it's the equivalent of a financial Guantanamo if you're comfortable with that fine but if you want to remain faithful to Allah and his messenger and even have five ringgits worth of respect for your own rational faculty you'd want to return to true money to real money and so you want to return to the dirham and to the dinar and that's why we're really looking forward to Hugo Salinas price when he comes inshallah from Mexico in a few months from now what is his experience 
in our market we will not permit that paper currency which is bogus which is fraudulent which is utterly haram but Tabliq Jamaat is not interested in that they have more important things to think about like dressing in the sunnah but in your pocket is the haram money yes all of us are using it but the difference between us and you is we are struggling for a way out of it and you don't even want to touch the subject haram you must not talk on this subject in the masjid time is up for you tabliq jamaat we have embarked on a wake-up call for our people that they don't remain sleeping in tabliq jamaat in our micro markets we will restore dinar and dirham that's our answer and if we have a shortage of dinar and dirhams in our micro market we'll use commodities of food as money like for example rice in that booklet in front of you you see in that the last chapter Indonesia can use rice as money and we will not allow we will not allow paper currencies to be used in our market so we do not have to be bothered of, about the fluctuating value of the silver coin in relation to your bogus money no because they are not side by side in our market our market is only dinar and dirham we also want to ensure the society which is collapsing around the world is brought back together that the Chinese and the Malay can live together in our Kampung and be so friendly with each other no more hostility between Chinese and Malay if you can do it go ahead let's see you do it I don't think you can do it but we can do it that the Christian and the Muslim and the Hindu can live together as a fraternity we can do it because we will live with mutual respect for each other and in our market the Muslim has no advantage over the non-Muslim <laughs> no <laughs> and in our market there are no fixed prices no price control no in our market if you plant you reap and if you don't plant you don't reap that is Islam as we know it so in our market we will have economic democracy and that economic democracy will allow the Chinese and the Malay and the Indian to live together the Christian and the Hindu and the Muslim to live together as a fraternity but we have to restore Islam in our community and in Islam we have certain concepts like the Jama'ah ah and the Amir the sheep cannot be without a shepherd all the sheep wandering all over the shopping malls <laughs> and the wolves eating them up one by one you see them in the tight blue jeans huh? but in our village we enforce the deen this is a no-nonsense Islam here in our village we enforce the deen amongst our people the Chinese will have their way of life the Indians will have their way of life the Christians, the Hindus we are not going to interfere in your way of life but we must come together to have certain norms of public conduct for everybody so you're not going to be walking around with a bottle of beer on the main street <laughs> huh? or your daughter or your sister your wife in hot 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 pants no <laughs> not in our village certain norms of public conduct 
the macro response is more important now where we do have control over territory we have an obligation to build power to respond to them because we know the attack is not only economic we have the big picture and Allah has commanded in the Quran Build power Build it to the maximum extent possible Not so that you use power to oppress No So that your power may function as a deterrent <coughs> And if nuclear power is what will cause them to step back before the attack, then build nuclear power. Build it to the maximum extent that you can build it. That it can function as a deterrent. Pakistan has already done it. It is time for Iran, which will do it immediately, Iran is attacked. Iran is going to announce it is pulling out of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty as soon as it attacks. And Iran has every right to build nuclear power, nuclear weapons, because Allah has commanded in the Quran, build power to the maximum extent that you can possibly build it. But there's something else. I was interviewed a few days ago by Mark Glenn from I think San Francisco and in his opening comment said to me Imran I believe that interview is on the YouTube you can listen to it Islam is the only surviving force in the world today the last one standing up to those who would rule the world I said, to, and he said, for him Christianity has fallen. I said to him, Mark, I don't agree with you and the Quran does not agree with you and the Prophet does not agree with you. No. The Quran makes a distinction between two kinds of Christians. Both are called a Nasara. But in the first one, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ba'da Uzu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who have faith in Allah, La tattakhizu al-Yahuda wa al-Nasara awliya, Do not take the Jews, and do not take the Christians as your friends and allies. Those who use the lazy man's methodology, would conclude that the Quran is speaking about all Jews and all Christians. That's a lazy man's methodology. <laughs> but those who use the correct methodology would soon realize that no, Allah is not speaking about all Jews and all Christians. Well, then which Jews and which Christians? <clears throat> Do not take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves establish friendship and alliance with each other. Allah is not speaking about an individual Christian who is a friend of his Jew who is next door. <laughs> He's talking about an alliance between two people. If you, be, you become friends and allies of that Judeo-Christian alliance, then Allah warns, وَمَن يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ You've lost your Islam. You've lost your Islam. You now belong to them. Too bad for those in Libya who join with NATO. Too bad for those in Syria who are joining with NATO. Too bad for all the Arabs who are beating the drums and clapping and clapping and clapping who support NATO. When you reach into the grave, my dear friends, you'll find out you are not a Muslims. This is the Quran. Ask Sheikh Yusuf Karadawi what's his opinion on this. This is one form, one part of the Christian world. 
with which we are not allowed to have any alliance or any friendship. This has emerged today in the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance. These are the ones who control the US Congress. These are the ones who control the IMF and the World Bank. These are the ones who have NATO as their military arm. But then there's another part of the Christian world. The Quran points to it. In the same Surah Al-Ma'idah, where Allah speaks and says, وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَ That you will most certainly find in time to come that those who will be closest of all to you in love and friendship and affection will be those who say, we are Christians, we are Christians. If that has not as yet fully emerged at this point in time, it's coming. It's coming. Who are those Christians that the Quran is speaking of? Prophet Muhammad answered for us, and the hadith is there, that you are going to make an alliance with Rome. Who is Rome? If you say that Rome is the Italian city of Rome, and Rome is there for Romans, I suggest you buy a one-way ticket to Disneyland. <laughs> Rome is in the Quran, not just the Hadith. When Allah uses the word Rome in the Quran, is He referring to Italy? To a city in Italy? Where has your intellect gone? To Hollywood? No. Rome in the Quran is Byzantium. It is the Eastern Christian Byzantine Empire which had its capital in Constantinople. The Eastern Christian is different from the Western. The Western has his center in Rome. He's Roman Catholic or he's Protestant. But the Eastern Christian does not even celebrate Christmas with you. He has a different Christmas. I think it's the 9th of January. 6th, 7th. 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, whatever it is. <laughs> it's not 25th of December. That's what. These Eastern Orthodox Christians are to be found in Russia, are to be found in Eastern Europe, to be found in Greece. Hmm? That's room. And the Prophet is saying that you are going to make an alliance with Rome. <coughs> and so we are saying to you today from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia that the religion of Islam is anticipating at the macro level in responding to what is happening in the world today is anticipating a Christian Muslim alliance that will stand up against those who are oppressing us in the world today. At the heart of Rome today is Russia. Oh yes, I know there are Zionists in Russia. Oh yes, I know there are Zionists in uh, China. But there are Zionists in Pakistan as well. There are lots of Zionists in Saudi Arabia as well. <laughs> and as NATO launches its wars to attack Iran to attack Pakistan where India is also going to play a major role in the attack on Pakistan attack on Egypt as NATO launches these wars there is going to be considerable fervor for change in Eastern Europe and Russia and so whatever continuing Zionist influence there may be would be overcome and the 
Christian Muslim alliance will be established. Already Iran has very firm and close relations with Russia. Already Pakistan has seen the writing in the wall and Pakistan has applied for membership in the Russian Chinese pact. And pa Russia, Russia has supported Pakistan's uh, application for membership. And I am confident that the Turkish people will wake up from their slumber at the moment and that the Turkish government cannot continue to fool the Turkish Muslim people in supporting NATO in Libya and supporting NATO in Syria. No, that NATO cannot remain in Turkey forever. No, la taftahanna al-Qustantaniya said the Prophet means goodbye NATO you cannot remain in Istanbul forever goodbye NATO perhaps it's going to be civil war in Turkey but this alliance of Christians and Muslims is coming and it is part of our macro response to the economic meltdown and collapse which we are already experiencing and which is about to be accelerated. This has been my micro response, this has been my macro response. In a nutshell, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give us a chance that we will put our heads together because mind is not the only one to further develop this response. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tub alina ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim wa rahmatika ya arhamar rahmin. Ameen. Ilahi las tulil fir dao si ala wa la aqwa ala nari jahim Allah fahab li Ampunan kepadaku, ampunkanlah dosaku Sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar Tuhanku, aku tidak layak untuk syurgamu Tetapi aku tidak pula sanggup Sanera kamu dari itu kurniakanlah ampunan kepadaku ampunkanlah dosaku sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar